Hey, good evening all. Um, just come out of the shop. The idea was to do a little cleaning up. Just going to put the uh, Kenwood TS 511S back together and set it to the side so we can get back on some other things that need to be worked on. But, you know, like I said, I was planning to come out here and do a little cleaning. But I already had this thing on the bench. So I want to just take a quick look at it. You know, in our last video, we checked it out. We found out that it receives real good with no problem at all. But, you know, we found out that 40 meters did not receive, nor did we have transmit on any band. So I just want to take a quick look, see if we can figure out what was going on. Find out, you know, why is it not transmitting? I've said it more than one time that a lot of times we have to listen to what a piece of equipment tells us. As I said, you know, when you look at a piece of equipment, it has a lot of stories that it can tell just by looking at it. Now, you know, Paul over at Mr. Carson's lab, he taught me that several years ago. and. I've stuck by that rule to uh, use as a baseline when looking at equipment. So, you know, we've, we've already listened to this radio. We know what it's doing. But why is it, you know, having the problems that it's having? Why doesn't it transmit? We saw on the spectrum analyzer over there on the IFR that it had just a little bit of signal coming out. We also know that the drive circuit is working because we were able to set the bias to 40 milliamps. But when we went to RF there was no output whatsoever. It was like the uh, PA was not even coming on or doing anything. I went ahead and took the liberty of uh, pulling the driver and checking it and I went ahead and removed the screws from the RF cage and checked the two 6LQ6 tubes and uh, on my ninth meter they saying it was shorted but when I went to the Hitchcock meter I found no problem with the tubes and they were showing at least 90 to 95 percent of efficiency so uh, and the mutual conductance was around 7,000 and I think it was uh, listed to be 7,200 somewhere in that, that ballpark but anyway the tubes check out okay so there was like I said there was just no output at all we know the drive's working because we was getting able to set our bias. So let's take a look at this thing and see if we can just figure out why it's not uh, transmitting. I should be in the house, in the bed, sleeping, <laughs> but can't sleep. Um, have those issues from time to time, so I decided to just come out here we do some things and one thing led to another first thing we usually do when we have problems like that is just get in here and start inspecting looking for any signs of burnt components loose components or whatever and checking around inside the PA compartment I could find nothing that was wrong uh, everything looks good RF choke looks good cores resistors look fine I went ahead and uh, tested some of these resistors down here. They all looked okay, no problems. So probably the best thing to do is go on bottom side and let's have a look under the uh, PA compartment and just see if anything is, uh, you know, catches our attention. And to get into this compartment. We have about nine screws that we'll need to remove 
to get the bottom panel off so I'll go ahead and get them out of the way okay all the screws are out we'll take our panel off set it over to the side and get in here and take a look underneath this PA compartment and just see if anything is uh, not looking right so I'm checking around here and one of the first things that I saw you can see the end of the band switch has these two gears this is actually a wafer switch that's up in the PA compartment that changes bands and I'm already seeing a fault that could possibly be an issue why it's not working on 40 meters if you notice right here you see this gear is cracked the other gear is cracked also so I don't know if that's out of alignment or just what's going on but we'll need to look at that and see if we can figure out why 40 meters is not working right, so we're looking here at the schematic and we can see our um, driver tube which is a 6GK6 and we know this circuit is working because we're able to read the bias on the uh, meter on the front panel so we know this is putting out some kind of power when we go to RF we get nothing out of the final stage so if we'll follow our plate lead it comes up here to our drive core unit and right here we'll see a blocking cap which is C4 and this should be a probably going to be a molded mica cap in the Yezu FT101 this cap is prone to shorting due to heat that is in the uh, bottom of the chassis because it sits right under the driver tube now the location of this one is not sitting under the tubes but it is under the PA cage but anyway if we follow the drive out run on up we can see the driver goes in to our final amplifier we'll come on in we'll go through both of our grid resistors PF1 PS2 and you see this one goes into V1 and this one goes over to the grids of V2 so what we're going to do is come here and check on that C4 and just see if we got any amplification coming out of this driver stage on the final side of C4 and see if anything is feeding these tubes okay if we look just under the uh, PA cage on the side that radio leaning over so you can see it there is our molded microcapacitor right here Sorry about moving the radio around so much. And there's a bare spot right here. So I'm going to connect the uh, oscilloscope probe lead here. And we'll see if we got any kind of output whatsoever coming out of this capacitor. Okay, our scope probe lead is connected. The radio is on. It's already warmed up. We're going to go over to the uh, CN switch and look at that we'll adjust the drive control oh yes plenty of RF power is coming out of that drive circuit although we have nothing on the watt meter so we know that our drive circuit is putting out enough power to drive the, uh, the final amplifier the reason is, you know, we have to wonder why is the final amplifier not working. So again, looking under the PA cage to do some more inspection under the tubes. Let's see if you can uh, see them from here. I'll probably have to uh, tilt the radio over. And 
and you can see our grid resistors right up here. That's one. And then that two. There's also some cobwebs. And there's another one buried under here. And look at all our grid resistors. They look fine. No problem at all. But then this caught my eye. If you look under this area right here, you can see it's black and charred. And this blue wire has took the brunt of a looks like an explosion so it looks like the two resistors that was originally here exploded for some reason and it could have been flashed over in the tubes or someone shorted it out but these two resistors have been replaced these are the original resistors that would be in here also, if we look on this side, these two resistors here have been replaced. So, now that we're listening more, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that volume control on, so it was probably picking up some noise. But we know something has happened into this area, so someone has been in here and doing some rework. So whenever you find somebody has been doing some work in an area like this, and this is the area that we seem to have the problem in, there's no output, it's drive, so you know it's definitely going to be in the final RF stage where the problem is. So the best thing to do is get in and start troubleshooting around and looking the area over and see if maybe they skipped something, maybe they didn't do something right. And one of the things I always do is take something that's insulated and get in here and see what moves around with the unit still on. And the first thing I'm seeing is these two resistors seem to move pretty easy. Flip it over to transmit. Aha. I want y'all to check this out. We're going to take a look at our watt meter here. And uh, let you see what I just saw. I'm going to flip it over to transmit. And I'm going to push on these resistors. Look at that. Close to 100 watts output just by pushing on those two resistors down here with this insulated screwdriver so there's probably a, a bad solder joint I'm going to go ahead and fire up the iron and I'm going to reflow some of these solder joints under here and we'll see what happens next okay so I came in here and I've reflowed the solder joints on both sides of uh, oh sorry about that I told you it's getting late, I, I need to be sleeping, but, and, um, <laughs> you know, I should be um, doing what I preach. If, if you're tired and sleepy, don't be working on something like this. There is lethal voltages here that can severely hurt you. And when you're tired and sleepy, you can make mistakes. And it only takes one mistake to, uh, you know take you out of here or severely injure yourself so you know whenever you're working on live voltage any high voltage magnet voltage be very careful so anyway i reflowed both of these solder joints on either side of the resistors i went ahead and reflowed these and i've checked some more out and checked our two pins to make sure that all the solder connections were made properly on those and the results were pretty nice okay again we'll take a look at our watt meter I'll flip it over to sin I've got the radio loaded up and there's a hundred watts that's simple we'll switch over to single side band okay I got the old uh, electro voice model 638 connected to the rig and we'll pan back up to the watt meter 
and take a look and see what it does. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. Radio test, one, two. Check. 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 Radio testing, one, two. Plenty of RF power coming out of this old Kenwood TS-511S. So it looks like now our TS-511S is uh, transmitting with no problem. Um, the meter is not working as good as it should. Uh, if we zoom in on it here. Check one, two. So it's not a lot of uh, meter movement on transmit. But the watt meter is showing that the uh, radio is putting out full power. So that's another circuit we'll have to look at and see. Next thing we do remember since now we got it transmitting is that uh, 40 meters doesn't work. So let's take a look at that and see what's going on. So we're back under the bottom of the radio again. I'm removing this shield. So we can take a look at the uh, band switch around the IF circuit. And you see we got three wafers in here. Now up here on this front when we have several crystals. And my original thought is one of those crystals could be bad. But it also could be a dirty or contaminated wafer switch that is causing this problem. So I'm going to get in here and clean this front wafer switch. See if that makes any difference. I'll turn the radio on. I got it set to 7.200. I've got the uh, HP set at 7.200 at minus 73 dBm. And what I'm hearing is a very, very, very weak single. I probably can bump the uh, amplitude. So yes, it is capable of uh, receiving on 40 meters. It just isn't doing it at the uh, correct level. So I'm going to switch this off and go ahead and do some cleaning on this band switch. So we look at our schematic again. This is our oscillator coil assembly. And right here is our 40 meter crystal. It's 15.895. And right beside it is our 80 meter crystal, which is 12.395 megahertz. And the reason why you know this is that uh, low in frequency, you'll have lower the crystal. If you come all the way up to uh, 29 megahertz, the crystal is going to be at 37 megahertz. So what we need to do is check this crystal at 15.895 megahertz and see if we're getting a frequency readout on it. So the crystal we're going to be checking is this crystal right here. And just below it is our 80 meter crystal. And we'll take the probe and go to the back side of it and test it. And we'll go ahead and flip it over to 80 meters. And we'll look at the frequency counter. Okay, I'm going to put our probe on the 12.395 uh, megahertz crystal. And there we are, 12.395 megahertz. I'm going to switch back over to 40 meters. And we'll take a look at that crystal. And we see that crystal is rating zero. Now, does that mean that the crystal is bad? Well, at this point, it's hard to tell. It could be a open core. That could be an open connection in the band switch. We're just going to have to shut the radio off and own through all that and make sure that we have a connection going through the whole circuit to make, you know, to be sure that this crystal is even uh, being put 
in line like it's supposed to be. So at this point, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, remove this 15.895 megahertz crystal and we'll put it in our crystal tester and hook it to our frequency counter just to verify that this crystal is bad. Um, I've already checked it, but I'll go ahead and check it again so you can see. We'll verify that our switch is good. I've already done that, but I mean to keep the camera right away. <laughs> okay, we'll verify that our switch is good. What we can do is come from the crystal and go through to the other side here and make sure we have continuity throughout the uh, switch for that one position and that's very simple to do. We'll have the uh, meter and continuity test and we'll go here from the wiper yes and we do have continuity so the only thing it can be is the crystal we'll go ahead and get this out all right, I got a crystal plugged in our crystal tester and we'll plug this into the uh, counter and see if we get anything from it this little tester I think I've showed it in many videos but it was uh, a YouTube video by Alan W2EAW that showed how to make this circuit and I use it quite often and I've got several different crystal holders up here to I set the various range of crystals. So we'll go ahead and get this plugged into the uh, frequency counter and see if we get anything. And we have it plugged in and we're getting 5.31305 megahertz. Now I haven't done the math and figured out what the frequency of the crystal is supposed to oscillate at. But 5 megahertz sounds about right so I'm going to record this number and we'll uh, have to go in and look at the theory and see what the uh, heterogyne and the uh, VFO output and everything is for it to receive on 7 megahertz 5 megahertz sounds about right now if this is correct that means there is something else that's in this circuit that I'm not able to detect. Like I said, there's no capacitors in line. So that ain't not a problem. So there has to be something else if this frequency is correct. Alright, so if you definitely saw the plot really thickens. It's a shame that we don't have the original service manual so that we can uh, really understand the mixing scheme uh, these crystals are marked you know like uh, 80 meter crystal is 12.395 but if you also put that crystal in a tester and stick it in there it is oscillating at 4.15233 and the 40 meter crystal is oscillating at 5.31305 so that really, you know, turns things around a little bit. What I'm going to do, I've got the radio, I'm going to turn the radio on. And as soon as it warms up, get it to make a little noise. Alright, I'm going to turn the IFR on and inject the signal into it. And you know, you we're hearing nothing. So I've got the HP set on fifteen point eight nine five on AM, and we're going to come here. To the back side of the uh, crystal board we're going to ground it and we're going to just attach the lead to the other side of the crystal and we're going to turn the output on so the radio
radio is now receiving the IFR, the signal from it. I know that's very ignoring. <laughs> so I'll switch over and I'll turn the generator off on the IFR. And if you can hear the drive control now pre-selects the receiver. Turn the volume back down, I'll turn the IFR back over to generate. And that's turning the drive control. Alright, let me shut this back off. So as you can see by injecting a 15.895 megahertz signal into the uh, back of the oscillator board, 40 meters now receives. So this is telling me is that this crystal is either drifted so far off it's no longer oscillating in the circuit. I really don't see anything by looking in the schematic that could be dragging this signal down. I am putting a very healthy signal into the uh, back of this crystal. So, my thoughts is after looking at everything else, this crystal is bad. So we're going to have to see can't we obtain a new 15.895 megahertz crystal. Uh, like I say, we think we know what it's cut at, but we ain't quite sure, so we're going to have to play around with that in the future and see if, just what we can find. I found a uh, patch cable that I used as testing here in the bench that I made many years ago. And I got the uh, external VFO connected to it. And it seems to work pretty good. It's like this little bit more noise in the uh, external VFO than in the internal VFO, but uh, seems to work okay. Let's see, can I find something to uh, go back over the front of this knob? and make it look original. Yeah, well, the band is not that great anyway, so uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, guys, that's just a little bit of a late night troubleshooting on uh, the Kenwood TS511S. And I'm going to have to uh, call it a night and go ahead and get into the bed. But uh, I think uh, I think we're gonna have a good radio here to restore. So we're gonna have to get out. You, you know, haven't done any cleaning whatsoever. Uh, need to get all the tubes out, clean the tube sockets and the pins, uh, clean the circuit boards, clean all the controls, uh, check the neutralization on the amplifier. The tube seems to be fine. I don't see no problem with the uh, final tubes. I say they are sweep tubes, you know, but right now they seem to be working good as long as they work good and uh, 
don't have a problem with we'll, just might go ahead and run them if they ever go out then we'll look at changing them over to some maybe some 6146s or something I think there'll be plenty of room inside this uh, PA compartment to do that and the VFO seems to work okay definitely going to get new caps and put in the power supply I don't want to trust those caps in the power supply as far as the radio I think the radio is fine we'll just have to go through you know and look for noise or whatever but if we're not seeing none I'm not going to change any caps in it like I say these these caps that was used in these series of, of radios the 520 the FT 101's are great quality capacitors to start with so if we don't need to change them we're not going to now you know if this thing within 10-15 years old I don't have no problem at all snatching caps out and putting new ones in it but I think we'll be okay on this one and just a note I appreciate everybody that voted in the uh, the Oxford video contest it looks like we came in second I know y'all did y'all's very best I do appreciate it um, I saw Alan looks like he came in at about fourth which I think he should have came in first with his uh, audience that he has but like I say Alan didn't push any uh, endorsing to the uh, the video he had put up but you know the guy that won I think he's uh, you know on Facebook so that group got a big look I think the biggest thing was you know deoxid company uh, keg was getting a lot of hits on their website so you know I know that that helps them in the long run but you know it is what it was I appreciate all your support by the way I'm getting my first patreon check coming in uh, a big whopping twenty three dollars and fifty cents <laughs> so appreciate all the uh, patreon supporters that will come in handy in the future and uh, now that I've set it to receive payouts on that maybe we'll see it climb on up and grow a little bit like I, say, I haven't been pushing anything on patreon I don't put no videos up there that are no different than what you see on YouTube and that's just the way I'm leaving it right now because um, I feel like what I'm sharing I share freely I don't want no one to have to pay for it right now So since the manual does not cover any of the uh, theory of operation in any detail, we do have some key things in the schematic with some frequencies here and there. So, you know, we can base that the IF is 455 kilohertz. It's, you know, it's practically what we can base it on. But in the future video, after I get a crystal for 40 meters, we'll go through this thing and figure out the mixing scheme on it and how it works and we'll go through how the receiver and uh, everything in there works and then through the transmitter that way we can get a better understanding hopefully somewhere down the line I can pick up the service manual if one really exists I'm still I'm a little leery of spending thirty dollars for what they have online because it could be you know it could be the same manual we already got which is the operating manual they call it a service manual but until I see it I don't know for sure but anyway you know that's where we stand at on it that's what we'll do the radio is working somewhat like it's supposed to be it's got good receive good transmit now we just need to get 40 meters taken care of and then do an alignment on it because I know the S meter is off but there is a adjustment on the back called RF volts and that adjusts the S meter so it reads correctly and transmit and receive so we'll get that done anyway this weekend is kind of a special weekend for me uh, my son 26 year old he is getting married to his wonderful and beautiful fiance so uh, this weekend will be tied up with a wedding so <laughs> lots of money to spend anyway we'll just uh, 
you know, going to just take the weekend and enjoy it and won't be out here in the shop much, so we won't be out here in the shop any, maybe first of the week or so. Now, if uh, you don't want to go out and buy a service man, if you got one of these, you can use the TS-510S to help with the alignment, especially some like the alignment points and stuff. But you got to remember now, it's a lot more tubes inside the uh, the 510S. It's basically the same radio, but in the 511, they nailed down and took some of the tube circuits out, replaced them with transistorized circuits. So yes, there's still some difference. I went online, looked, I can get a service manual. I don't know what the quality is. I hate buying stuff that I don't know what the quality is, but they're online for about 30, 35 bucks. So I'm gonna keep looking, see if I can find an original service manual for the uh, 511S. So I'm gonna call it a night and I doubt I'll get this edited tonight. It just ain't no way. So it'll probably be tomorrow or the next day. I'll go ahead and get this edited. Get it up for your viewing pleasures. So with that, we'll catch you in the next video. See you now.